थ्री टू वन सर वी आर लाइव नाउ नाउ वी कैन स्टार्ट हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर रजत अग्रवाल प्रेसिडेंट आसाम इंडिया एंड वेलकम टू यू इन द नेक्स्ट मास्टर वेब सीरीज of assam india the master class which we so this year this month this is the last series of this month of 2023 and uh, today's theme is uh, trauma in the reserve so uh, we have a very renowned faculty from egypt professor fadal who will be talking on uh, his important very very important lecture so without wasting time i ask invite shamshul to give a brief introduction to him and we'll be hearing the talk then shamshul please yeah thank you sir thanks for sir so good evening to all members we just welcome you again in our series of uh, Uh, master class of webinar of uh, uttar pradesh and uttarakhand chapter and that is an elizabeth and trauma today we have eminent uh, international and national faculty today we have uh, the renowned uh, egyptian uh, professor mohammed faidal uh, from uh, uh, lemi cultures and society uh, nasa city cairo egypt he'll be talking on arthroplasty uh, elizero assisted technique in long bone uh, trauma we have our loving uh, dr ajit agarwal president assam in india he'll be talking on uh, primary management of compound fracture to be about elizero then we'll be having Case discussion by Uttarakhand team. Very uh, good surgeons, renowned surgeons. We have Dr. Mohit Jindra from Rishikesh Uttarakhand Aims, and we have Dr. Major Rajiv Kaur from Dehradun Army Hospital. So, let's uh, talk about Professor Fadal. Uh, is 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 working at Minya University Hospital, Almenia, Egypt. At uh, is at Elaris Center, NASA City, Cairo, Egypt. Um, his executive board member of EOA, European Orthopedic Association, Limb Recom uh, Limb Reconstruction Surgery, and Correction of Deformity Center, Elaris, Nasa City, Cairo, Egypt. Consultant of Elaris and Adults and Pediatric Orthopedics, Minya University Hospital, Almenia, Egypt. Executive Board Member of EOA, Active Member of Secord, Secord Computers and Enabling Technologies Subspecialty Committee Member, Secord Infection Subspecialty Director of Africa, Wyo Director of Africa. Recently, uh, uh, in project, we had a wonderful meeting on uh, Wyo and Cairo, which I attended. Is uh, uh, WOC Vice President, Founder and Program Director of Elaris PD. Member of Assam International, Assam Egypt Board Member, Founder of Egypt Arab and Elaris A, Member of IPOS, PUA Member for ITM website. His Founder and Program Director of Professional Diploma in uh, Limb Reconstruction Surgery and Correction Deformity, which I've been a faculty also. So it's a very interesting online and physical courses uh, organized by Fadil sir. These are his contact emails and website. There's a list of publications there in Oxford. There's a website link. You can see the different logos. It has been associated with so many organizations, heading at Egypt and Arabs and various uh, uh, programs. His uh, uh, work as a research guru also. He is the chairman of scientific committee of many international conferences in Egypt. Chairman and member of scientific committee and uh, the international course of uh, skeletal deformities correction. And chairman and member of scientific committee uh, annual international congress of the Egyptian Orthopedic Association. Co-secretary General of 57th Annual International Congress of the Egyptian Orthopedic Association, Chairman and Member of Scientific Committee, EUA Annual Conference, Moderator of Bain International Symposium Abroad, like uh, fourth meeting of Assam International at Kyoto, uh, Japan. He's been a moderator in the session uh, with uh, many other uh, renowned faculties like Hiroti Sukeya, uh, James Binsky, Kevin Lui, uh, Takashi uh, Matsushita. Member of Scientific Committee of many international conferences like Secord uh, PAOA Dubai, Secord India Hyderabad, 42nd Panorama Medical Congress Amman Jordan, PAOA Jordan, PAOA Oman, PAOA Yemen, PAOA Morocco, KSA International Conference in Saudi uh, Arabia, and Assam Poland, Assam Kuwait, Assam Russia, Assam Egypt, Assam Greece, Assam India. He is a member of Scientific Committee of many international courses Jordan, PAOA Yemen, and uh, Oman. So today we'll be talking on orthoplastic elizero assisted technique in long bone trauma. Over to you, sir. How does over to you, sir?
यस सर जी सर प्लीज स्टार्ट First of all, thank you so much. Uh, my topic today is about orthoplastic lazaroplastic technique and long bones trauma. Uh, thank you, uh, dear uh, friend, uh, uh, Dr. Shams al Huda, about this introduction. I am not in need to present myself more again, and uh, I would like to present my thanks and gratitude for all the committee members of Asami India, especially uh, Dr. Rajat, uh, Dr. Ruta, uh, Dr. Giant, and. Uh, happy to share us with uh, some uh, uh, promising stars, Dr. Mohit and uh, Rajiv. Uh, it is a very nice idea to uh, uh, have uh, all uh, new generation. Uh, I am sure that uh, I will enjoy by their presentation. Our history with cooperation is long, long time ago. I think I still remember in uh, 2021 uh, during the era of COVID. At that those time we enjoying the presence of our colleagues, uh, uh, our friend Jean Janwala, uh, Ruta, uh, Shams al Huda, uh, uh, Ravi, and uh, Rajat, uh, uh, Christian, and uh, Jinendra. Uh, all of them, actually, I enjoyed with them with many meeting webinars uh, in that uh, 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 very bad uh, time. Uh, actually, I'm honored in many uh, national and international association. I would like to present on behalf of all these uh, societies uh, our respect and our cooperation in advance in any time we are in need to cooperate with each other for the safe of for the sake of our tyranny and our patients. We just finished the, uh, the Secret and the Egyptian Hospital Association uh, conjoint meeting. It was fantastic. I met many of my friends and colleagues uh, from India. Uh, unfortunately, I missed to meet uh, uh, one of uh, our SME board, but later on we will try to be more organized to have you all. Uh, conflict of interest. Actually, I have, have a conflict of interest uh, of uh, uh, Usually, I would like to share anything related to Asami India. Actually, this is my conflict of interest. My aim is this topic. I will try to uh, divide it uh, into five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, and so on. Uh, try to cover uh, uh, an aspect. I know that you are all working in this aspect, but I would like to name it or to propose a name for what we are doing in uh, our practice by using Elzarov concept and apparatus, but I hope that uh, uh, my uh, project of uh, nomination of this technique, uh, which collects and it has happened, but without name, but I would like to suggest for you this name, I used it to do and present it uh, maybe eight years ago. Uh, so we will try to talk about definition of the orthoplastic principles, what is the mean of orthoplastic principle generally, and its effect on the long bone trauma. Uh, looking for the definition, uh, the definition uh, starts since 1993 by uh, Levin. Uh, uh, Levin uh, presented that the concept uh, uh, consists of uh, uh, principle and the practicing of orthopedic and the plastic surgery applied to clinical problem, either by a single provider or team, of providers working in concert for the benefit of the patient. This is, the, at that time, this is the concept and this is the definition of Scott Levy. Also, in uh, after uh, 1993, he presented an editorial uh, uh, lecture talking about uh, this uh, concept and uh, reconstructive soft tissue defect in foot and ankle. And he mentioned in this editorial uh, in uh, 2018, this definition again. At the time, uh, Zoran and his colleagues uh, tried and make uh, some disagreements that uh, the definition and the history that had been prevent, presented by Scott Levin is not uh, uh, to some extent uh, uh, go in, uh, in, uh, in compatible with their knowledge as they uh, uh, said that 
they used to work with uh, uh, the well-known name Marco Godina uh, since uh, 1977. So that uh, uh, they uh, say that two surgical specialists or spedic antiplastic, this is, had been convented or uh, invented by Godina at that time. L letting this uh, uh, miss uh, uh, understanding between uh, 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 Scott Levin and uh, 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 that uh, uh, one of uh, Godina, uh, also reconstructive microsurgery, uh, Banayoti and uh, Mar Marvurginis in International Orthopedic talk about the reconstructive microsurgery. Andreas and the Banayoti said that orthopedic surgeon and plastic surgeons both specialized in microsurgery. So there is a cooperation or there is a, a matching between all these th three subspecialities. And they consider that microsurgery is a speciality with significant overlap that plays a critical role in advancement and improvement of surgical outcomes with the development of orthoplastic. So the orthoplastic is maybe orthoplastic, orthopedic and uh, orthoplasty and also microsurgery. Uh, the ideal is uh, such in this case, looking for this a child, open fractures, grade 3b, as we will see here. In these cases, they usually uh, would like to be an orthoplastic scale is to, in the same session, concomitantly, in the same time, to apply uh, XFX uh, monolateral and apply the uh, uh, plastic surgery in the same session. This is the uh, usual or the conventional orthoplastic uh, uh, vision of the orthoplastic surgery. For ourselves in Egypt, we started the 2015 by uh, Chicago Foot and Ankle Deformity Correction Center with Rodriguez and started to uh, uh, the, 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 the implementation of the orthoplastic scales to have some benefit of this as orthoplastic. So we are indulged in this since that time and we consider that uh, though uh, uh, known, but it is not to uh, some extent had been practiced but by many of us. So uh, looking for our problem, which is uh, trauma and the post-trauma uh, uh, loss of uh, bone, uh, massive bone loss and or following infection, we also we are in need to deal with a bone defect of different uh, sizes. In this instance, many techniques present solutions for such problems, and the specific methods of skeletal reconstruction of massive bone associated or not with soft tissue remains a controversy need for a solution. So we met many of uh, marvelous uh, uh, flow charts or what is called algorithm for uh, management of these uh, bone defects post-traumatic. And one of them is uh, related to our friend uh, uh, Rodriguez. And uh, I am also usually, uh, I am also uh, uh, following up your activity and actually appreciate this uh, too much of the caring of uh, Trini and LRS uh, in Assami, India. Looking for the defect, uh, according to its uh, uh, massive uh, presentation, we may have uh, main blocks of management, either to use vascular technique, three microvascular bone transfer, vascularize the free fibular graft, or the malvarous uh, uh, procedures of distraction osteogenesis, or what I would like to call it, a of assisted technique in management of uh, uh, severe bone defects. And these assessors may use the fibula, Elizabeth Atlantic technique, may use bone transport, or uh, the most uh, uh, last salvageable procedure is to use salvage fibula Elizabeth transfer in leg, using also the method of distraction osteogenesis. So I would like to introduce the, the, the terms of orthoplastic Elizabeth assistic technique scenario. Uh, as a review for uh, what we would like to do in case of uh, bone defect, uh, either to use a bone graft, which we will known for all of us, non vascularized bone graft, but it is recommended to use uh, uh, in uh, uh, patients less than five centimeters and not recommended in those 
uh, using a null vascularized bone graft in uh, defects more than five centimeters. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, looking for the SS sites, that uh, some authors recommended that two centimeter as a maximum size of segmental diaphyseal tibial defect should be managed with autologous cancellous bone graft. Especially in some cases, we may have both uh, sacroiliac joints had been sacrificed in a previous uh, uh, operations to reconstruct uh, post-traumatic inf uh, infection or post-traumatic bone defect. So we sometimes need some application and some modules of uh, uh, cages or to use non-vascularized fibula transferred to the other side or for anywhere as we'd like, especially for the upper limbs. Using the vascularized uh, 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 vascularized bone graft to substitute this bone defect, uh, uh, it is beneficial, especially in cases of infection. At that time, the, there is a lower risk of post-surgery infection. But the, uh, the bad thing is that the low and low grade of uh, uh, tibialization of the fibula in these instances and the need for a long time for consolidation proximally and distally. Uh, so Elizarov is uh, suitable in many instances to keep this the patient walking while he is waiting for full consolidation of the case. But in all these cases, actually, we prefer to consult our plastic surgeon if we have, because uh, in many instances we couldn't have, and if we have, we couldn't rearrange and make this combination of work to be uh, concomitantly in the same site, in the same session, in the same ward, in the same hospital, or in the same institute. And in all instances, we found that the problem as the, at last or from the start will be on the shoulders of the orthopedic surgeon. So we're trying to usually save this by doing all these things by ourselves as an orthopedic surgeon. We are looking for muscular technique also as a marvelous uh, technique for replacement of uh, long bone defects, uh, which is uh, uh, of variable uh, sizes and maybe uh, going up to maybe 20 uh, uh, centimeter as mentioned by uh, muscular himself. Uh, some uh, also plastic effect of Elizarov assisted technique is just to do simple shortening. Simple shortening solves the problem in many cases, especially those of uh, uh, high demanding uh, or uh, those who are not uh, uh, amenable for long surgery or for a long time of uh, apparatus to do lengthening and who have uh, uh, auto-immunosuppressive uh, uh, disease or for uh, those of old age that have uh, so few uh, activity or social uh, demand. Uh, shortening and angulation had been used and in our opinion this is one way of also plastic effect of Elizarov. You can make angulation to stitch the skin or to close the skin or even to sutures uh, the tendons and the following uh, uh, the healing of the soft tissue, even two weeks later, you can do uh, this uh, uh, repositioning of this in a straight way again. So it is also, an, in our opinion, an also plastic effect of Lizarro. We are doing all, we are doing this, but we couldn't name it, we didn't name it as also plastic Elizarov assisted technique. Also lengthening in some cases, if more than three or four centimeters can be managed uh, and can be dealt with either with uh, monolateral or Elizarov as mentioned in the previous slide. The other marvelous effect of orthoplastic effect of Elizarov to do bone transport that carry with it the bone, not on the bone only, but also with it carrying the soft tissue and muscle and the subcutaneous tissue also, this is slight uh, uh, controversy for dear friends. I presented a lecture and uh, uh, one day of uh, workshop in, in Nigeria. Our friend Okinola, who uh, is the president of ASAMI in Nigeria. I am honored also to remember this last activity of ASAMI India. Thank you for you all for joining uh, uh, us and for our cooperation. 
As I mentioned, consultation of the plastic surgery and need for cooperation is uh, mandatory. But looking for these our trials to listen and to watch and to try to learn from uh, Rodriguez and Suhail in a cadaver dissection lab in Cairo, we try to uh, master this technique of uh, microvascular and uh, transportation. We will see how this piece of fibula will be taken and doing very uh, efficient uh, uh, recovery of uh, a piece of bone, either tibia or fibula. So I relied upon Elizar of assisted technique as we are all doing this, but we didn't name it as Elizar of assisted technique. And this is the return for the godfather of this direction, histogenesis, uh, uh, Elizar of Gabriel Elizar. This principle of tension stress, it was to re mention it again. It is a gradual traction on living tissue create stresses that can stimulate and maintain the regeneration and active growth of certain tissue structures. This is the definition of the gradual uh, tension, a gradual traction, or uh, uh, the uh, stress uh, or uh, tension stress there. So I would like usually to use also plastic elizorphocystic technique in some instances and we relied upon the versatility of Lazarov itself to do many things either in trauma or post-trauma effect. This is uh, the view of the use of Lazarov in many uh, years ago had been uh, known uh, so long time but the problem is usually how to maintain this for a long time without keeping the patient uh, in bed or restricted of movement. This is a marvelous effect of Elizarov. We also, we can do this technique by using a fibula without all these technical demands of knowing many things about microvascular to do a cut of fibula in this way. So in planning, we are in need to uh, assess our patients. If we are in need uh, to do for them a reconstruction, we should uh, restrict these techniques of orthoplastic using fibula especially for massive bone loss and in cases of vascular compromise and in cases of short typical remnants either proximary or distal. So uh, uh, for looking for a patient with a bone defect, post-traumatic uh, or either post debridement with extra problems such as non-union or a stiff knee or a stiff ankle, for such a case is an example for what we'd like to call it or soplastic Elizarov assisted technique. We can see here how this, it was uh, an open fracture had been fixed by uh, a monolateral external fixator that had been resulted in loosening and severe infection that need to be resected and apply what? For the classic orthoplastic, we are in need to do microvascular resection of the fibula to tract even this piece or more longer to be in this area by microplastic scales, which is not been available and uh, easy in any orthopedic uh, system in any hospitals, in most of uh, our hospitals. So the term of uh, salvage fibula Elizarov transfer uh, as an orthoplastic effect that I would like to present it as an uh, introduction for using Elizarov assistive technique on solving these uh, conditions. It works uh, well for doing this condition and uh, for those uh, skeletal recognition of uh, uh, massive bone and soft tissue loss. It is uh, remain a topic of controversy, as uh, we said, but also a topic of compromise. It is not usually uh, 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 a honeycomb. It is usually full of some uh, uh, problems. It is not simple for the patient to have a fibula instead of tibia and to have this small bone uh, instead of this wide uh, uh, triangular cassection bone. Uh, so uh, for those patients who lost or couldn't have this conventional uh, uh, management of bone transport, we look for salvage use of fibula to transfer it is an orthoplastic effect which is beneficial. As in this condition, as I uh, show in a hurry, 
the previous uh, case. The first presentation was past history of comminuted fracture tibia infected. External fixation had been applied by ional plural one, as we see here, with uh, a good position or acceptable position for an early uh, emergency room. But later on, we can find that there is unstable because it takes long time until the final definition. This There is outpouring pus, necrotic bone comminution, severe pen tract infection and loosening of the pens, which everything here becomes sclerotic, as we see here. So we uh, ask and uh, consult ourselves and to start the removal of the external fixture, the bribement of the bone and soft tissue, and even the uh, uh, chance screws uh, uh, penetration or chance screws uh, uh, reaming uh, for these uh, uh, osteomalytic uh, uh, penetrations, and apply antibiotic either systematic or locally. This is a clinical view after few weeks of uh, removal of the external fixator, and then we apply, after we are uh, have clear everything, we apply excision of all this sclerotic bone, and re again, we removed around 15 centimeter of the bone. After removal of more than 15 centimeter of the bone, we application of antibiotic local and systemic, and four weeks later, at that time, no infection, clinically, laboratory, we going again for the operating room to do what we think about using the fibula. We try to use the fibula, but the, by the idea of Elizarov assisted technique, in this case, we apply proximal construct and distal one, and in this, this tell it is too short to the uh, foot, but this is too long because we plan to replace the fibula to be in between these two remnants from the distal one and from the proximal one. So application of the percutaneous wires, as we will see later on. From here, we apply just uh, one or two, one and a half centimeter and one and a half centimeter here, here to do corticotomy of the fibula, and here to do corticotomy of the fibula distally. And the fibula itself, before doing a corticotomy or complete the corticotomy, we apply olive wires, three olive wires, and from this one above this proximal one, we do corticotomy of the fibula, and below this distal one, we do corticotomy of the uh, distal wire. And at last, after application well of these three wires, and attach it to the uh, side plate here, attach it to it, at that time, we do completion of the corticotomy above and there to have this view uh, in uh, uh, this is the case if we think of doing uh, microvascular technique. If we look for here from the uh, lateral view, we can find that it is a semi-invasive technique or mini-invasive technique one. And the direction of the, the wires should be from posterolateral to anteromedial. And it is clear here from the, uh, 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 the image that uh, here before uh, doing a movement, here just corticotomy above and just corticotomy distal, as we see here, corticotomy above and there. And this is a three wires, uh, and this is a tibia had been uh, resected from the necrotic part and ready to accept this movement of the fibula. As we see here, uh, the movement may be obstructed by the proximal. So in this case, we can do distraction of the distal block until we have uh, this room amenable for uh, accommodation of this fibula. This is an in, uh, intraoperative uh, image had been uh, taken, and this is another shape. Looking for the movement, we should ref refer to the atlas and check for this area as we will transform, uh, transfer the fibula. It looks from cut two up to cut five or early than this by a few centimeters. We should put in our mind this direction in this place to be from posterolateral to anteromedial, not direct lateral at all, not anterior at all, but as from posterolateral to posterolateral. In this way, it looks safe to make some uh, uh, pressuring here and have pass all this area to go for the tibia, which is accepted space in uh, the longitudinal one. So 
this is as we uh, think from postulate to and to media, and this is direction which is uh, 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 important step in the operation. This is after application. This is the system of traction for the site late. It looks like this from it looks ugly, but uh, it works well and no problem at all. It is anterolateral and anteromedial, uh, which is not disturb his his feet. This is the shape as a coronal one or uh, from uh, end on from the, the tibia. Uh, during full up, we can start here working and we are in need to push this to anteromedial. And this is clinical photo while we are doing our journey. Now we are approaching the tibia and started to have what looks like Y shape or V shape. And the soft tissue, as we see here, not compromised at all. Here is the journey until in EP and the lateral view, we can find that moved. This is in EP and lateral view. In EP, looks like V shape or Y shape. And in the lateral view, it is in continuation with the tibia, follow up just before removal of the apparatus. And this is how we bypassed all these massive and comprehensive uh, expert system of uh, microsurgery or also plastic or plastic surgeon who would like or microsurgeon to help us by doing this by ourselves as an also plastic Elizarov aesthetic technique surgeon. This is how it looks clinically later on. And this is what we have. Video, no time for this. And this is how it looks. As a conclusion, I would like to put in our mind that uh, all of us uh, uh, working with Elizarf assisted technique. But I hope to uh, admit this idea of also plastic Elizarf assisted technique while we are confronted with a problem of uh, need for and microsurgery or also plastic colleague. So also plastic Elizarf assisted technique is our main stay. And if we would like to add if fibula, also plastic fibula is a facetic technique. It works well, especially as a salvage procedures. And this uh, uh, method needs some compromise with the patient as uh, the fibula, uh, uh, although it is uh, valuable in post-traumatic bone defect and the management of bone defect, uh, uh, especially in the union and infected non-union, and in cases of um, uh, minimal remnants anterior or proximally and distally, it is valuable and more important as uh, a procedures and may uh, uh, replace, uh, uh, if it is not possible, it can replace trifocal bone transport or vascularized or use of non-vascularized or muscular technique, which needs a long time. But it results in a leg support and walking in simple orthoses. The patient should know that he, for a long time, he will use an orthosis to safeguard from uh, 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 vigorous uh, activity. And also, uh, uh, mobilization should be uh, reduced for some extent until uh, 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 hypertrophy of the fibula in some cases. Uh, at last, I would like to remind you that uh, White, World in Physic, World Against Infection on Spedic and Trauma Congress, it will be held in uh, uh, Miami uh, next September uh, in uh, 2024. I uh, uh, actually welcome you all to share us uh, there. Thank you, and I hope that uh, uh, you uh, accept this uh, uh, suggestion of Elizarov assisted technique, also plastic Elizarov assisted technique. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fazel, for your wonderful talk on managing the bone tip X by the fibula transfer. It's one of the great procedures and by the method and the technology you show it, I think many of us will be motivated to do it. Uh, so one question is, what is the average Elizarov time in uh, union? Usually your patients what, with your patients, how much, what is the average Elizarov time? Well, uh, in, in this case, especially, it goes well, actually, because we have what shapes like V or Y shape. And the patient, as we see, is a slim and uh, average weight. So he stick to uh, have uh, the uh, custom made, uh, what is we know it before a long time, Sarmiento 
just to turn into uh, uh, orthotic, uh, which looks like uh, uh, PTB. Uh, so after uh, feeling that uh, the, uh, the the place of uh, the proximal and distal uh, docking site for the fibula, which is could be judged clinically and radiologically, uh, which in this case it takes around uh, seven months. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, he take, as you know, uh, his all activity walking from the first day, as we know all. That is, this is a marvelous effect of Elizaro. He can st he can go out of bed after recovery of anesthesia. He can go to bathroom, which is very. He can go for every social activities. This is the benefit of Elizaro assisted technique, which is marvelous and not comparable with by any mean by any technique that to use Elizarov as adjuvant in such cases. Actually, no need at least for uh, uh, thrombolytic drugs or aspirin or uh, uh, vaxato or all these things uh, to, to take care of DVT. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks, thanks a lot for your marvelous talk. Welcome and, here. Uh, I know that you do. You did uh, more, more hard and complex cases than this. <laughs> sir, uh, may I ask a question for the young surgeons? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So, uh, what is the rate of transport uh, of fibula to the uh, tibia and the slotted drive, sir? Ah, uh, excellent. Ah. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, depend upon the uh, one millimeter, as we know, per day. Right, this sir. is this is this is the safeguard. We can go through this transportation, but uh, in these cases, as you are pushing the muscle, and it is uh, not uh, a wide distance; it just maybe uh, two and or two uh, oh five uh, centimeter around right. 25 millimeters so uh, this can be passed by uh, uh, maybe uh, five weeks or six weeks so you can do uh, uh, oh uh, 75 uh, uh, millimeter per day to safeguard any uh, unexpected uh, uh, ex uh, complications uh, either to have uh, low uh, regenerate, as we know that fibula is uh, too uh, weak of uh, doing transverse uh, uh, rail or transverse tail uh, to attach as it is for the origin. So I didn't rely upon the fibula to the tibia only and leave off the tibia, but I relied upon the V-shape to keep the fibula in contact with its uh, root and have the the fibula continuation with the distal part. So I have what is looks like Y shape. So this, in my opinion, uh, give me a chance better uh, many times than uh, to uh, make it transverse direction with loss of the continuation with the uh, mother fibula. Uh, I find that uh, uh, seventy five. Uh, 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 or uh, oh, uh, 75, uh, uh, three quarters of millimeter per day is suitable for doing this gradual and not gradual. You can say that more slower than usual to keep this attachment or this umbilical cord with the proximal part of the fibula. That is a very good observation, sir. Uh, one, uh, one more question. Do you do some sort of compression or docking after transport is over? Uh, I did uh, this uh, for the distal construct, yes, but sir. for the proximal, I left it to the last days of removal. Uh, for the distal part, it is clear for me because it is the, the tip of the fibula in a wide-based uh, uh, area of uh, the, uh, the tibia. But for that one, the proximal one, I keep before uh, uh, removal of the apparatus by around four weeks to do dynamization, uh, not compression. Dynamization works well in most instances, as I have a continuation with the mother fibula 
and a new uh, 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 docking site in a very good uh, uh, um, uh, uh, bone of the wide based uh, uh, proximal tibia. So it was, uh, I, as I think, maybe give some advantage this Y shape of fibula, not end to end, but we can call it uh, side to end. Right, sir. Next question is, uh, being fibula, thin bone, what is your weight bearing protocol? Do you allow full weight bearing or partial weight bearing, sir, in the rings? For weight bearing, uh, actually, full weight bearing as he can tolerate. He had I crutches to okay. safeguard him from slipping, uh, from uh, uh, walking in a hurry, and even for the street or even for any open uh, 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 walking area. Uh, so crutches help him and announce that he is in a rehabilitation area. But actually in his home or in his own area, he usually behave, as he told me, most of them, by what is called like a step and dip, step and dip for this, the, the, the one that it had uh, Elizarov. Uh, he, he used it to uh, uh, walk in caution uh, out, outdoors, but in his uh, house, he can uh, walk uh, easily uh, without scratches. Right, so my last question is, sir, what is the post ring removal uh, brace protocol? Bracing protocol, sir, any brace you apply yes, for some time? It is, it, is, uh, it is very important to note him and to have consent from him, uh, even uh, uh, politically, that he should know that you are now relied upon just a fibula, not tibia. And you will be in this or sources for all your movements, such as uh, uh, you can say uh, socks of uh, DVT. Uh, you wearing it as a glass, if you have uh, a glass. So before getting down from your bed, you should put your orthoses. And this orthoses, it is not too ugly. Actually, it looks like PTB and it looks like a, a, a barrel of uh, a cast, but it is not cast. It is the thermoplastic uh, cast, thermoplastic sheet, which is applied. It's too uh, uh, light, not heavy at all, and also poured. And with Velcro strap, he can use it to just support and working on pre-tibial uh, uh, PTP, pre-tibial bone uh, tendon uh, transfer. Uh, the weight is transferred to the above the tubercle and that around the ankle joint. This is a simple one. If he can uh, take it as a, uh, uh, ready-made, uh, and he have the financial support. He have many types of uh, these uh, uh, orthos. Right, so thanks, sir. Any risk of neurological complications regarding the peroneal nerve, sir, while transport? Uh, actually, uh, I'm lucky, and the patient also is lucky. No problem with uh, uh, peroneal uh, transfer, uh, even vascular. I try to rely upon the important thing is that we should go through from posterior lateral to anteromedial direction so as not to cross behind the uh, enter uh, uh, the 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 enter uh, septum between uh, uh, fibula and tibia or to cross in front of it we should rely upon pushing the muscles and have the way by pushing the muscles uh, posterior to the enter uh, septal uh, uh, vessels and fascia. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Any more questions for the panel? Dr. Mohit. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Dr. Fadal. Uh, it was Hello, a really Dr. nice Hi. talk. Yeah. It was a really nice talk. Just one or two questions uh, regarding this fibula. Uh, when we are doing an ostotomy of the fibula, are we cutting the periosteum also along with it to transport to uh, to for easy transport towards the tibia, or we are uh, spreading the uh, periosteum of the fibula? Uh, uh, actually, uh, also an uh, experienced question. Thank you. <laughs> actually, I used uh, with it minimal invasive uh, technique, but I uh, uh, incise uh, the uh, the fibula uh, uh, post uh, exposure of it and putting 
uh, bone levers and periosteal elevators, lever, lever, levering of the soft tissue, and then periosteal elevator, and then application of uh, both uh, hormones and do drilling, uh, low grade uh, power drill, and it is better to be a hand drill, and leave the things uh, as it is if I am not uh, doing the uh, three. Uh, wires or three uh, drawing wires that will push. So I should uh, put the three wires with olive for the fibula before doing the corticotomy, either proximal corticotomy or the distal one. But the same technique as the tibia, uh, skin, soft tissue, soft tissue uh, uh, and then uh, the muscle uh, splitting uh, by uh, uh, blunt uh, homan and periosteal elevator is uh, scalpel to cut the periosteum and uh, uh, drilling and following the drilling osteotome uh, if in need to fracture the proximal and for the distal the same thing. Okay. We have uh, Dr. Jayan, Dr. Umar, Satish Nishi, sir. It's already question, sir. Uh, uh, Shamsul. Yes, sir, please, sir. Hello, <laughs> Dr. Mufakta. Hello. Ah. You just arrived from Cairo. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, can I pass a uh, comment? Can you hear me? Yes, yes very sir. Well. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Fadl. We had a very good time in Cairo, this oh. court conference. And yes. I was lucky that I had the three papers and out of that, one was this, OPIAT, fibula bone transport, after post-trauma, especially gastro 3B, and tumor resection, and big bone defect. And I must congratulate Professor Fadel that he has shown nicely, and there are lots of variants of fibula transportation. And he has shown nicely. Sometimes we do the fibula middle dissection and just to transport the part of the fibula including this whole fibula or part of the fibula means you do a longitudinal split of the whole fibula the defect according to the size of the defect and then you can gradually transport by putting the olive wires in the middle of the tibia the, depending upon your defect this is what like, there are lots of variants of fibula transportation lots yes. of variants yes and uh, lots of variants and this is yes. a fantastic te technique and marvelous technique that you should uh, nicely and you nicely mention and when i was addressing the hall was full and one of the presenter told in the ask me the question why you are not going for the amputation? Then the chairman who was sitting, he was opposed that question. And why? You have got this OPIAT while go for amputation. If you do the amputation, think about the patient at night. If he is suffering with some other diseases, he's, whenever he is going to the toilet without his leg, and what will happen? This, this was the answer. So my suggestions for the young orthopedic surgeons and what Professor Fadel showed, this is the best treatment for long bone defects. You don't need to go for amputation. Amputation is not the solution. You have a very good Elizaro effect that you nicely showed. And this is my observation. And thank you very much, Professor Fadel, for showing your case. Thank you very much again. Uh, thank you. Welcome, uh, dear friends. And uh, also, I am happy that you uh, shared us. And uh, I miss uh, uh, my uh, dear friends in the Asami uh, India board. Inshallah, next time we will uh, meet and try to arrange this and agree with you. And also, I enjoyed your uh, lectures in Cairo and mm. also lectures about uh, Renault phenomena and uh, uh, that one of uh, in the Betis, uh, foot and ankle. Uh, all of us actually, uh, as I mentioned, deal with a lizard of assisted technique. But uh, what I would like to, is to say any uh, technique that we use, which is in need for 
microvascular or plastic, and we can do it by ourselves yeah. as an uh, expert in Elizarov to some extent. So I would like to call it uh, uh, orthoplastic, because orthoplastic it is not possible in many institutes or colleagues. Uh, the uh, even if I found him in uh, uh, my uh, mm. college and my university hospital, I should uh, rely upon making appointment and uh, waiting and uh, yes, the yes. patient may take so long time. So the problem is on the shoulder of the orthopedic surgeon from the start. So uh, I That's try, why the, me yes. and you all and the board in uh, semi India and uh, in Bangladesh and all other similar countries to uh, uh, teach and learn and train our colleagues, uh, as you mentioned, uh, don't do amputation except at last chance. Except yes. if amputation is safe life for the patient, uh, as that of the, uh, uh, we can say, Madura foot or um, we can say compartment syndrome or something like this. But doing amputation for something which be reconstructable uh, is worth uh, to try. Yes, thank you very much. So, any more questions or shall we move to next talk? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Just stop share. Okay. So, thanks, Father, sir, for a wonderful talk with a wonderful interaction. So, next, uh, sir, I need to introduce yourself, sir. Please, yes, sir. Yeah. Should I, I uh, to stop sharing? Yeah. Oh, please, please, please. I think I stopped. Yes. No, no, no. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. yes. Thank you, sir. So today, our next talk is by our loving uh, president, uh, Dr. Rajat Agarwal, sir. He's uh, uh, presently president of Asami in India. He is a gold medalist in MBBS. After completing his MS in uh, 2007, he went for deformity fellowship in Bombay Hospital under Dr. H.R. Junilwala for six months. In 2008, he went to US to Dr. Drew Pale for one year fellowship in limb learning and reconstruction in 2009. He joined Government Medical College Gorakhpur as assistant professor in orthopedics. In 2016, he did fellowship in Elizabeth and Kurgan, Elizabeth Center, Russia. Since 2011, he has been working as a senior orthopedic surgeon in Agrawal Orthopedics Hospital, that is A Hospital, and it's at uh, Shud Gorakhpur. He is currently president of Assam India, has published many national and international articles. Recent one in uh, 2022 on Kubernetes virus in JPO British. He trains four fellows every year in limb, limb learning and reconstruction. So with this, I'd like to request the sir to share his talk. Thank you, sir. What you, sir? Yeah, it's visible. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, sir. Please go full screen, sir. Okay. Yeah. Very so easy. welcome, everyone. Uh, my talk today is uh, play, uh, management of uh, compound fracture tibia. Uh, primary by primarily by Elizaro, uh, the, and the technique we call as plating assisted fixator in compound fracture tibia. This is a very basic talk for Elizaro surgeons. I think almost every Elizaro surgeon knows it. But more importantly, this topic is very important, especially for the young passing out orthopedic surgeons who have to manage compound fracture tibias, maybe as a first case in their private practice. And if you deal your compound fractures primarily with the Lizaro, you can get really wonderful results. And more importantly, you can avoid many complications, which may not be good for your practice. So this is a case of infected non-union with a discharging sinus, a 25-year-old male came to us in our OPD, a very common scenario of the patients which we get in our OPD. It was a case of a compound fracture tibia. Somebody did a primary nailing and it turned it into an infected non-union and patient came to us. Now we removed the nail, we did a thorough debitement, we did a, a, bone, a bone defect was there, we did a corticotomy and lengthening and finally we were able to achieve union. Okay, that's a good result, but that's not the point. The point is 
why this happened. Could we could have prevented it in the first place? The patient suffered a lot with multiple surgeries, with a lot of money. Could it, it would have been uh, prevented in the first place? We must understand that nailing is a good option if the patient presents early and there's not much of communication. But there is a disadvantage of chance of spread of infection and damage to the endosteal blood supply. What if the patient comes after days, which is very common in our country, many times the patient comes after three, four, six days. And on the side, you can see there is an unhealthy discharge. You're not very comfortable in putting an implant inside. And there may be combination many times. Most of the surgeons currently uh, use a temporary external fixator and a secondary uh, nailing or a plating. This leads to multiple surgeries and there is always a high chance of infection and non-union. Elizarov, usually as an option, it comes last in the list. Why? Usually it is reserved as a salvage procedure when all other treatment options fail. Why not do it in the first place? But still, most of the young surgeons are hesitant and they are not much interested in Elizaro, un unlike replacement or the scopy surgeries. So what is the problem with Elizaro? Actually, there is a problem with Elizaro. There are actually two problems with Elizaro. The first problem is the reduction. In Elizaro, usually we do percutaneous indirect reduction technique. We all are comfortable with an open reduction and internal fixation of the fractures. And doing a percutaneous reduction in the operation theater of displaced fractures is quite difficult. The second problem is with the frame application. Usually in various Elizaro workshops, we are taught to apply frame on a normal bone. But it's difficult to apply the frame during the operation theater in a displaced fracture. So how to solve this problem? Why don't we do open reduction and internal fixation only? which we do in every, every trauma case, which are not compound. And then we make it as a normal bone. Then we apply Elizaro on it like a normal bone. We are taught in a workshop. And then we remove the plate. Well done. This technique we call as a temporary uh, plating or a fixator assisted plating. It is technically very easy. There is obviously better reduction. And there is a decreased rate of malunion and non-union. Now, let's say a 28 years old male came to us with the compound fracture tibia. We did a debridement, a thorough debridement. We identified the muscle, the fragments and fixed the K-wires. And then we applied a plate, which you normally do in any case, which is not compound. Now, we temporarily closed the skin and ma made it a normal bone. And then we apply simply a fixator over that, an Elizaro fixator. You can always check the vascularity with a Doppler machine. Even the Elizaro can help you in a soft tissue traction for a gradual and controlled skin uh, approximation to avoid the necrosis. This is very important in tier B and C cities where the plastic surgeon is usually not available at the time of the surgery. Then you can... Uh, Take the help of the Elizaro also in managing the soft tissues also up to an extent. Now, this was the final frame. The Elizaro was applied. The skin was approximated. Now, this was the post-op picture. You can see the fracture is properly reduced. Just with the help of two lag screws, the plate is removed. A fixator has been applied. There is no major implant inside. The chances of infection are less. Bone is properly reduced. In one surgery, you have managed everything. Actually, you must understand that, especially in private practice, number of surgeries is very important for a patient. A patient hardly affords two or three surgeries. In fact, if you will say in the initial state that you may be having three, four surgeries, patient may run away. So with the Elizaro, this is a very good advantage. And in one surgery, you manage the soft tissue, you manage the correction, you manage the union, without any chance of infection. A very simple case, a 10-year-old boy came to us with a compound fracture tibia. See, we just applied the plate first to reduce the fracture, made it a normal bone, and just apply a three-ring simple Elizaro fixator over that. See, this is the intra-op, see arm picture. You can see with the plate, 
we can achieve a proper reduction, which is difficult to achieve if you try to apply Elizaro percutaneously. And then we just uh, reduce the fracture of the plate and simply we apply the fixator. And then we remove the plate and we close the vent. This is the post-op picture, no implant inside, which means the chances of infection is very less. Fracture is probably reduced. And with the Lizaro, you can start walking even with day one. Everything they done in one surgery. Even as I said, you can manage the soft tissue defects with the Elizaro. Now, this is an aluminum plate with a stopper wire. You can uh, put it and you can do a gradual skin closure and many times the wound heals without doing any plastic surgery game. So, some of the very basic frame application tests, whenever you're going for a compound fracture tibia, you should have a knee and the heel support, which you made with the Lizaro instrument. It helps you in having a 360 degree uh, uh, view and a working space. The first and the most important thing, I've always apply the first reference wire in the C arm, which has to be go parallel to the knee joint. Otherwise, it may lead to a virus or a valgus deformity. The first, this is the first wire, which has to be under the C arm. And the second wire, which has to be uh, parallel to the ankle joint. And you have to fix the frame parallel to the tibia and the fibula so that there is no procurvatum or a decurvatum deformity. Now, these cases in x-rays, they look very simple. These are simple because we applied Elizaro in the first place and we didn't wait for the complications. So middle open one third fracture tibia, we applied Elizaro, another middle one third. Like there, we have a series of more than 500 cases. But these look simple because that's the main goal. You let it be simple. Keep it simple. You don't let the complications to happen. Middle one third fracture, segmental fracture tibia, one third committed fracture tibia, one third committed fracture tibia, badly committed fracture tibia. See how beautifully the fracture united. Another very badly committed fracture tibia, another fracture tibia managed with screws, another fracture tibia managed with olive wires, with olive wires. In fact, in cases of infected non union, also, you just take out all the ha hardware, open the fracture, debride it, reduce it properly, and just apply an Elizaro frame over that. You will get good results. Lower one third fracture tibias. Fracture tibias in children, you can just fix it with the K wire. If it's a small, if it's a child with not much of a length of the bone, even you can apply in the femur. In fact, we uh, did a thorough review of literature and we found there are quite many articles on Elizaro as a primary treatment for open fractures. There are many surgeons who are doing this, but what the difference we found between these uh, publications and our technique is most of these publications, their recommendation was that these type of surgery should be done by Elizaro surgeons. And they did a percutaneous entire reduction technique. That's why they, they recommended Elizaro surgeons. And in many articles, they did a temporary fixator, which was converted to Elizaro after a mean of eight days. Now, that's the difference. What we recommend is we recommend this surgery to be done by every young trauma surgeon who don't want to be an Elizaro surgeon even, but for managing of compound fractures, you do this technique. You just open, reduce, and temporarily internal fix, and then you immediately apply the Elizaro application, and just one surgery, and it is done. In one of the review, we found even Elizaro is not even considered in compound fractures. They did a comparative study on the ream nail, unream nail, external fixator, plate fixation. Elizaro is so less that it's not even it's not even considered in doing the comparison studies. Now, this is what we are trying to change. Now, as we talk about the advantages, as I said, usually for the management of soft tissue, we go for a delayed primary closure or a slip thickness skin graft or flaps. But Elizaro can even help in the management of the soft tissue also. With Elizaro, obviously, we can correct any malalignment later on in the post-op period with the help of olive wires. One of the very big advantages, it avoids multiple surgeries like temporary fixator, the nailing, then bone grafting. These all are avoided with Elizaro. 
there is always a less chance of delayed union and non union because with elizar we can go even for a gradual compression later on which is not possible in any nailing or plated cases and the best part is the the chances of infection are very less as you are not applying any internal hardware now elizarov is famous as the one of the only treatment options to manage the bone defects later on if there is a bone defect you can always manage it later on now we talk about the uniplanar fixators or elizarov now this is totally a surgeon's choice whether you want to apply an lrs or a rail fixator or an elizarov fixator it depends on which fixator you are trained on if applied properly every fixator will give a good result the only thing is the applied it properly if we compare the recent hexapoid design, uh, devices like the def base or, or the tsf or suv you must understand that elizarov is our own tried and tested maruti which is sold for so long and usually you don't get fail with it so what we recommend is the first as with any other driving you first learn driving on a smaller car like a maruti and later on you can try the latest gizmos currently the mercedes and the bmw which are supposed to be the uh, tsf or the def fix or the suv of the current scenario but it's always better to first learn the driving first learn the technique with an elizaro and later on you can choose choose whatever you like now finally what we recommend for every orthopedic surgeon who is not an elizaro surgeon we don't ask you to be an elizaro surgeon but you must have elizaro as an armamentarium in your surgical procedures you must understand that a bulk of cases are trauma and open fractures are a significant part of it you don't need to be an elizaro surgeon but just learns the basic elizaro for open fractures and apply elizaro instead of a temporary fixator avoid multiple surgeries be aggressive and do best in your first shot so the take home message is don't wait for the complications to happen and expect elizaro to do magic do elizaro in the first place when things are still simple what we call as preventive orthopedics in future in one of the talks some time back i heard a japanese surgeon who were trying to invent beta adenine coated implants or plates which they we can apply in compound fractures and we 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 don't need to remove it so unless these type of implants come in the market try it sir thank you thanks a lot thank you sir thanks a lot for a wonderful talk on let us visit reserve so do you have any questions sir padal sir i think is mute is mute padal sir can you hear us yeah yeah i can hear yes i hear you yeah so any questions any comments from your side I have questions, but uh, I uh, I am waiting usually to uh, listen for uh, our colleagues first, especially three knees. So I uh, keep myself for uh, last one. Okay, sir. Right, sir. So, sir, how many cases sir, you have been applying plate in this compound fractures? Uh, what is the ratio of uh, these cases, sir? Now, actually, if it's like a grade three, when it's usually more than ten centimeters, and you can see the fracture front in front only, right, then sir. it's much better than to try to fix it percutaneously, percutaneously and reduce it. If you are seeing the fracture in front and with a soft tissue damage, is better to just apply. You just apply a four or a six hole plate, a very small plate. You don't have to strip the periosteum even. Just apply the plate and fix it in, and reduce it as we do in any other fracture. this makes the surgery a lot easy especially for the young surgeons well we must understand we have the fracture in front and we are trying to reduce it with the wires so it makes logically sense you just reduce it in front and then you apply the lizaro for very like say let's say puncture wounds if it's if you can reduce it with the percutaneous wire it is fine but many time we have seen is it's a badly committed fracture 
and lot of displacement. We just give a sm small incision and we reduce it. So what we recommend is if it's a grade three fracture, more than 10 centimeters of uh, open injury, you should definitely go for a plate. For a lesser amount of injury, if you can reduce it, that's fine. But if you can't reduce it, it's better. It, there's no harm in opening it, reducing it, and then closing it again. It's a final, sir, please. Oh, this one is hand, sir. Please, sir. Sir, your comment, sir. Myself? Yes, sir. You raise your hand, sir. Yes, I raise. But uh, if no question, I, I have a question. Please, please okay. do, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, excellent uh, suggestion. And uh, actually, uh, you have now, uh, uh, you can say, uh, uh, assisted the plate... Uh, uh, as an uh, assistance, so yeah. you 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 buy a new assistance. <laughs> yeah, actually, place. we have heard of a we have heard of fixator assist plating. <laughs> Normally, you, it is a procedure, but so, this is a new term. Yeah, yeah, you you save uh, you save money for one assistant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, if doing assistance by yourself or production with their fixation, you save time. Uh, you save uh, traction for the vessels. You save traction and uh, manipulation, which is harmful for the open uh, uh, condition of the soft tissue on the bone. Uh, uh, straying or uh, uh, taking the, the, the distal part or the leg, which is fractured, uh, uh, by doing traction or doing manipulation, rotation or uh, uh, flexion, extension, it is so harmful for the internal structures of the leg. So it is, uh, I am with you actually to do uh, in uh, unreducible uh, uh, or non-reducible fracture easily by traction. And in those cases of suggested uh, uh, invagination of soft tissue in between bone to do open production, in this case, I safeguard many soft tissues from harmful because vessels, nerves, and every uh, soft tissue amenable for damaging by moving the distal part or the fracture part, uh, right or left or above or down or flexion or extension, those soft tissue could be damaged or maybe torn by this methods of uh, 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 strongly uh, uh, trial of reduction. This is uh, my uh, appreciation for your technique from this point. The other point is that uh, a question. Did you find in some cases that you find an infection in the site of doing this plate uh, intraoperatively and later on you found infection in the same area even uh, late after uh, two or three or four weeks or you didn't uh, meet any uh, cases of uh, post removal of the plate uh, infection. Actually, the plate side is the same as the compound fracture side. So it's hard to tell that the, if because in compound fractures, infections will always happen in a percentage of cases. So as you're saying, I'm thinking because it's difficult to uh, say whether the infection happened because of the compound fracture as such or because we applied a plate. But because we applied a plate just let's say for 10 minutes. We just applied for a reduction of the fixation and we removed it after 10 minutes as we applied the frame. So we don't think so that just by applying a plate for 10 minutes may lead to infection. Only thing is, if we are doing a lot of periosteal stripping, then the chances of infection and dead bone may increase. So we try to apply a, a narrow plate with minimal soft tissue uh, stripping so that we don't give do any more damage to the soft tissue. That, that's the main thing we always try to avoid. Excellent, actually. Excellent. Thank you. Very Akansha, good idea. Yeah. Akansha has a question. Dr. Bari, you are mute. Uh, Bari, sir, please unmute, sir. Dr. Bari, aap, you are mute. Please unmute yourself. Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, listen, uh, Rajat, uh, take yes, it easily, what I will tell. Professor Elizarov was always, I will just 
quote the Elizarov. Professor Elizarov was, was always fond of saying, no surgery is justified to do any reconstructive surgery by my technique unless he has got the competent idea regarding the technique and the apparatus. This is number one. Number two, soft tissue lengthening is a combination of a stretch and regeneration. Before Elizarov, rings were invented by lots of the orthopedic surgeons. But the biological parameters that was given by Elizarov is still everybody all over the globe is using the biological parameters of Elizaro. Even tailors, a special frame, ACV, everybody. Three dimensional correction, compound fracture. In my life, I have not faced any problem by doing the three dimensional corrections. What is the advantage of Elizaro? Multi level, multi correction, any kind of deformities. And open fracture, why I will go for the plating if I can correct it by Elizarov technique. You just tell me. This is the violation of the rule of the Elizarov principle. This is the violation of the rule of the... You can do it, but do you have the publication of doing that one? Lots of other publications you have shown me, but I have not agreed. In my life, I have till today, I have done 42,000 cases in my life since 1982 from my residency. But... Why I'll go for, if I can correct this one, why I'll go for plating that Professor Fadel mentioned? You just tell me. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello? sir. sir. My, yeah, yes, my, sir. That... my question is that if I can correct the compound fracture, Castillo 3, even that before that, here showed only this one. Why you'll go for the plating? You just tell me the for reduction long, Castillo 3B or 2A. You are why? Just give me the answer. Why you will go for plating? If you can correct it three dimensional by olive, any correction, any deformity, why I'll go for then plating? Just give me the answer. Then you are removing the plate. By on the table, I can correct this one. I can correct this one on the table. And everything must be done gradually. This is the principle of Elizaro. Okay. So don't take it otherwise. Yeah. My so, uh, uh, observation, my observation is open fracture, assisted plating. You can do. You may invite the infection. The question was raised by the professor Fadal. How many infection cases you have treated? Open means that is infected. Infected what? Most of the cases in open case. Even then, you have shown your case. Interlocking nail one and two. C. Interlocking lane by CM control, even then infection you are getting. Uh, open fracture by plating. Periosteum, when open fracture, per periosteum is hampered. Disturbance of the periosteum. And then you are putting plate, you are just reducing and then applying it is out of why, I don't understand. Now, I'm not agree with you. This is my opinion. Please don't take it otherwise. Thank you very much. There is a, sir. Yeah, sir. Let me speak. That's the point I want to emphasize, which I stated at the, at the first of my slide. Sir, you can reduce every fracture with a Lizarro without applying a plate. But what about the thousands of surgeons who are just passing out? They don't have any idea of a Lizarro. They just know how to apply a very basic Lizarro fixator. And I have seen many, many cases in which a Lizarro was applied, applied, but the principles were not followed. The fracture was not reduced. Just for the sake of the Elizaro, they applied the Elizaro, which lead to really bad name of Elizaro for centuries, for, for a decade. People just had applied an Elizaro, fracture was not reduced, and they thought that Elizaro by itself will do everything. If you apply the principles and you reduce it properly, which can be done by every experienced Elizaro surgeon, this technique is not needed. But what I have seen that either they don't apply Elizaro or they apply Elizaro, a really bad Elizaro. And they apply a plate or a nail, which gives to disastrous results. So unless you are trained in reducing the Elizaro, uh, reducing the fracture by Elizaro itself, and you can see the fracture in front of you, which with always already the periosteum has been stripped off. Then instead of applying a bad Elizaro, it's better you just reduce it and apply a proper Elizaro. 
So that's why I said this talk is not for the experienced Elizabeth surgeons who can reduce the fracture beautifully by Elizabeth. This talk is for the young surgeons who are applying a plate or a nail and giving disastrous results or applying a Lizaro, which they have learned one week before in a workshop to apply Lizaro on a normal bone. And there is no reduction. And then they blame the Lizaro later on that it doesn't work. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Right, so thank you. What, what about the professor father's comment? I want to I want to uh, listen to it again. Uh, I, th I think uh, uh, Dr. Rajat explained uh, a good idea uh, mm. about uh, whose are not efficiently uh, trained in Elizarov. Uh, uh, for they, this, they, for, for then this, they should not, then they should not apply Elizarov. <laughs> yeah, yeah and they, but then they are applying a plate or a nail, and it's disastrous to the patients. Because yeah. the surgeon will do the surgery. They will not refer it to another surgeon. They will be doing the surgery anyhow. Uh, even then, even then, uh, uh, my opinion is that uh, Elizara will steal the... You have, you have another, another, you don't take it otherwise. See, mm -hmm. 1952, Professor Elizara invented this one. Till today, 2023, the biological principles, who has given that effect of Elizaro? Only playing with the wires. Even a lot, lot of the orthopedic surgeons doing hybrid, telling Elizaro, this is not Elizaro. You are putting the shunts, and at the same time putting the wires, this is called it. This is not Elizaro. This is not Elizaro. But the Elizaro, whatever I have learned from that, and I am doing in my life with playing with the wires, except in the upper of the you can do whatever you like, but if you want to follow the principles, that's why Professor Elizaro always telling in his book written in Russian language, I'm telling in English, no surgery is justified to do any reconstructive surgery by my technique, but Elizaro, unless he has got the competent idea regarding the apparatus of the technique. This is the principle. Violation of the rule, you have done, this is okay. But this is the violation of the rule of the principles of the Irizara. This is my message, what I have learned for the Kurgan Center and what I am doing. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. sir totally <laughs> agree with this. This is just during the learning phase until you learn the Irizaro, but we still recommend that you apply the Irizaro. But okay, instead okay. of applying a very bad Irizaro, this is just during the learning phase. Once you, are, once you have learned it, you, you will not need it. Yes, sir. Okay, for those who are not confident, you can apply very yes, good. thank you. Thank you, sir. Akansha has a question. Akansha, please. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir, that was a very nice uh, talk. Uh, very informative. Uh, just have one question, sir. Uh, in the pediatric skeleton for a middle third compound fracture that you showed, um, you had applied some K wires. So I just wanted to know um, what stage, like after how many weeks do you remove the K wires, sir? Actually, when you applied the Elizaro, you think that the, the fracture is stable. You can just remove it then only. But okay. if you think that there is a combination and the fracture is not stable, you can leave the K-wire because the K-wire will hardly do any much harm for infection. So you can leave the K-wire and once the fracture is united and the uh, frame and the fracture is united and the bone and inf uh, wound has healed, you may apply remove it later when you remove the Elizaro frame only. Okay, or sir. sometimes the there is loosening of the wires and the wires try to are coming out from the skin. Then you may have to remove it earlier. If you, if you see that the wires are protruding to the skin and causing uh, harm to the patient, you may remove it earlier. But later on, otherwise you can just remove it with the Lizaro frame also. Okay, sir. And uh, another question, sir. Sir, just wanted to know what is the um, uh, like uh, minimum length of the plate? Like how many hold plate? do you use sir, for fixing the preliminary fracture? Actually, I try to use a minimum uh, whole plate, maybe a four plate because we have to apply wires also. And we have the principle that the wires, as uh, near they are to the fracture, the frame will be more stable. So if we apply a longer plate, we have to apply a wire 
outside the plate. So the, our wires may uh, be a little far from the fracture. So many times I just apply a four hole plate, two hole above and two hole above, because it's just uh, to reduce the fracture and to fix it for 10 minutes. So you don't yes. need a longer plate as, as the principle in uh, trauma that you need a long plate. You, yes, you, you may just be fine with a four hole plate. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Sir Kanshna, for the question and all the best for upcoming uh, course at Hyderabad. Yeah. So now I invite uh, Dr. Bohit Dhingra from Rishikesh. He recently did a very wonderful course at uh, Rishikesh Ames. He has a case discussion. Dr. Bohit Dhingra, are you there? Yes, I am there. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, Over to you. Good evening, everyone. Uh... Actually, very nice talk, very good interaction. And uh, as Dr. Professor Faisal said, every case is, you know, your case is yours. So you have to deal in some, in a very specific way. Shall I see my screen now? Mm. Yeah, please, please. Go to the first slide, please. Yes. Okay, my my case is uh, not of Elizra, but it's a newer device what we are having in the market is alpha fixators, articulated limb fixation devices. I've been I've started using this device since last one and a half years, and uh, I'm having good results when I'm using it in femur. So I've restricted myself to using this only in femur. Uh, this is my case. He was a young male, 22 years male, who had come to us in emergency. He had a grade 3B open fracture and uh, classified by US 33C3. And he had the surgery in June 2021. Uh, he was applied as uh, uh, the principal says that you do an early debridement, reduce the joints well and applied x-fix so he was applied uh x-fix uh after debridement and uh applying x-fix we had uh, actually closed the wound and uh, we had fixed this uh, intercondylar area with the help of cc screws and applied external fixator we, the debridement was followed by a uh, medial gastrinous flap which was done some uh, 20 days later than the primary uh, surgery and uh, later on a genicular artery profitable flap was again done by a, a plastic surgeon. And in the meantime, when we were applying a flap, we had put a semen beads in the uh, uh, in the uh, wound because he, uh, he had developed infection in that area. Now, these beads were removed uh, in a local, uh, locally with the, uh, and the wound was again divided. And this patient was then referred to me for further treatment. Now, this was the condition of this patient when he had come to me. He had a shortening of approximately 10 centimeters. There was a wasting in the thigh. The skin over the fracture was puckered on the medial side. There was a deformity in the thigh. The small ulcer was also present of 2 into 2 centimeter uh, with the scar. Palpations, there were no tenderness as uh, usually we don't have much tenderness in uh, non unions. So now uh, there was abnormal mobility in both the planes, distal pulses were palpable. Now, the, the if you see the movement, there was no absolutely no movement at the uh, uh, knee. He just had the 15 degree of uh, jog of movement, probably that was happening at the fracture side, not at the knee. And extension was restricted. He had a shortening of approximately 10 centimeter in the fever. This was his x-ray when he had come to us. This, there was a huge bone gap. The intercondylar part was uh, reduced by the primary surgeon and fixed with uh, candidate screws. <clears throat> and uh, this was, uh, since he, when he came to us, his all these pins were all infected. He was uh, pouring from the proximal pin side, so we had removed the x fix at that time and gave him some uh, pin rest. Then we operated this patient in uh, March. So uh, when we did a planning for this patient, we had many problems with him. 
for the problem first was a non union because uh, there was no act, no activity at the fracture site he had a lot of shortening there was a lot of soft tissue contracture also present he had loss of knee movements and there were pro uh, previous broken pins present in the uh, femur and uh, obviously putting an internal implant here was out of question because he had uh, soft tissue compromise and also uh, there was if i had gone for a internal uh, i mean internal fixation he had a lot of chances to have infection so keeping all these six points in mind i thought what best i can do with this uh, patient because i can't cover all these things with us uh, you know uh, one definitive surgery so uh, knee movements were out of question for me yes the soft tissue contracture uh, i could have managed by releasing all the scars shortening i, I could have managed with doing a corticotomy and lengthening non union i could have managed uh, doing a good debridement and uh, freshening of bone ends so all these things i would have done with the help of an external fixator and here what i used was alpha fixator so alpha fixator are nothing like they are like the lrs uh, fixators where we are, they use lrs pins in the uh, bony fragments now we have this uh, we can actually bypass the knee and we can uh, uh, get some fixation in the tibia as well with this kind of fixator and uh, in the primary site what i did was i had uh, uh, debrided the bony ends i primarily docked the bony end and did a cord cord me above now in doing this uh, uh, debridement and docking the bone uh further 2 to 3 cm shortening was produced so now i had a shortening of approximately 13 cm in this patient and i needed to produce 13 cm of bone in order to make this limb uh, equal to uh, the other limb and also uh, achieve union at this at the side so this was his post op x ray you see i had three pins in the proximal segment i had a corticotomy there i had docked the uh, primary site Uh, put one pin into the distal fragment of the femur and put so a few pins in the tibia and uh, made the frame so this was his x ray which we usually get after 15 day to see if the corticotomy is working well or not and uh, further x rays were done in uh, further coming months and if you see the fragments have started moving away from each other and we are having good regenerate which is being formed this is the x ray of uh, may 2022 and uh, uh, it was approximately uh, we did in uh, april so it was approximately 2 months after the primary index uh, uh, surgery of corticotomy then this is x rays of august you can see the uh, degenerate being formed there now we went on kept kept on uh, distracting this fragment till we attained attained uh, the uh, equality in both the limbs uh he had few problems in between because of the pins i had to change one or two pins in between because he was developing some uh, infection there i had to change those pins but yes we uh, somehow passed that time of that ex uh, keeping external fixator on and until this was the x-ray of november 22 and this is clinical photograph uh, where we had achieved the equality in both the limbs and this is his x-ray at february 2023 this is his video once he had achieved the uh, achieved uh, equality in the limbs uh, we uh, started making him uh, walk on uh, with the help of walker putting putting uh, weight on these uh, bones so that his uh, his bone quality imp uh, improves because uh, the problem what i was facing was that okay, uh, when i was, when i put this pins into the distal femur or the proximal tibia the hold in the distal femur was not as good as uh, i was getting hold in the proximal part of the femur as well as in the tibia so uh, my anticipation was that this bone quality should improve uh, once uh, he had we, i had achieved this uh, regenerate uh, i had passed this external fixator time and had achieved this kind of regenerate i uh, because i had a, because the regenerate which was produced was approximately 13 cm very long region nets and it had a very high chances to, of uh, fracture now again i had a problem because putting in the to protect the region net i have, either i have to uh, keep this external fixator for a long time or put an internal <coughs> implant there so putting a plate on this area was difficult because the uh, soft tissue around the knee was not good so i uh, thought of putting a, a, a tens nail i took the fixator out and put a tens nail just to uh, provide some kind of uh, 
uh, support internally uh, uh, so that uh, we can avoid uh, any bending of this region rate, the long region rate. This is his uh, video which we took when we had put this uh, tense nail. He started walking with the walker. He's had, he was putting weight on the limb and he went home. Now, what happened is few days later, he came to me. He, he, uh, he, he stopped following some some of my instructions of you know keeping some protection for some more time and a few days later he again came to me with a small with a pain in his thigh he, he didn't tell me what had happened so i got an x-ray then and if you see here there's a small fracture which has happened in the region rate so uh, rather than putting uh, any uh, further you know plaster or all i just asked him not to be a weight and put a brace on him his distal part was all united. If you see, the distal part is good, uh, united very well. But the proximal, uh, there's a small fracture which has happened there. Uh, I gave him rest for around uh, one and a half, two months. He came to me a few uh, days back. And I took his photographs. He had no limb line discrepancy. This is his uh, video now uh, where he is uh, walking with the help of uh, stick now. He definitely has some amount of varus. I can see some amount of varus uh, in the femur, but uh, uh, we have to still have to wait for uh, further for his region to get uh, more uh, uh, stiff and uh, bear his weight. Uh, we had published our uh, results uh, of uh, eight cases uh, of this alpha fixator, where we have used this fixator for a gap on your femur. Uh, now we have done more than 12 cases, but the, when we started writing this paper, we had uh, included some eight cases in this uh, study. And this is this patient who had a gap of approximately 12 centimeter and uh, post-op limb length discrepancy was around uh, seven and region rate length what we attained was around 14 centimeter. Uh, overall, he, we got good, function, full, good functional results of Asami and good bone results. So, uh, just to summarize, distal femur fractures are literally common, and vast majority of these fractures occur uh, with a uh, with open injury as an open injury. Adequate stabilization, which is required uh, uh, here, because what we have is we have a poor bone stock uh, distally. If we if this is an open fracture, and if we have to put an elisero or we have to put a uh, LRS pins or uh, alpha fixator pins, then the the amount of bone what we get here in the distal fragment is quite less. So the primary goal of the treatment of the non-union is to provide an environment in which new bone can be created or by establishing and maintaining the mechanical stability and biological conditions that are conducive to new bone formation. So uh, there's a, uh, since the distal femur has limited bone stock, so uh, we need sufficient bones uh, for sufficient uh, uh, pins to get good uh, fixations. And that is why when we are using the alpha fixator, we are augmenting the uh, fixation with the help of putting pins in the tibia uh, down there. The presence of knee stiffen along with the non-union complicates the situation. The selection of particular technique is based on the type of non-union and whether or not the alignment of the fragment is adequate. So to conclude, alpha fixator is a safe and can be considered as an alternative to Elizar of an LRS, providing adequate distraction osteogenesis, less neuroversal compromise due to pains, better patient tolerability and user friendly distraction. And in the presence of soft tissue infection and damage, uh, plastic surgery procedures can be carried out with this alpha fixator, which I think uh, is difficult to carry out with Elizar of fixators. Thank you. Wonderful case. Any questions, sir? Why didn't you put the brace in the first instance after removing the fixator? Uh, yeah, actually, I had advised him a brace uh, to get the uh, to get this brace made from a prosthetics. So he uh, he thought, ke, I mean, he had no pain, so uh, he himself got some uh, lazy on it. So he he took, he made this brace, but later once he had this pain in the femur and a small fracture had developed <laughs> by the time. Yes, you have to be cautious because it was such a long uh, lengthening. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, sir, Bari, sir.
a very difficult case, of course. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Of course, difficult case. He has done well, but still, the uh, question arises after treating with this alpha fixated. Uniaxial cannot be comparable with the multiaxial. This is my number one. Number one. Number two, distal femur fracture. You could easily do it by only multiple curiosities are fixated. Distal femur. It is not difficult to put the lizard fixated. Alpha fixator cannot be comparable with the lizard fixator. Never. I know the alpha fixator. What is alpha fixator? And by treating, you have done a lengthening very good. But see, the problem <coughs> arises. Number one, virus deformity. Number two, knee stiffness. You should have to go for the quadriceps plasty. But it is difficult here. Virus deformity, you have invited. And refracture, you have invited by using this alpha fixator. Lengthening by doing any kind of fixator, you can go for LRS or alpha or Elizar. But this kind of distal femur, better to go for Elizar. This is my opinion. Distal femur, multiple fracture, multiple K-wires, you can handle with this. And at the same time, if you if you put the uh, Elizar in the distal femur and the proximal tibia, go for ASD, articulated hinge distraction, you can supple the joint. You can moment, you will get the little bit moment. And lengthening also easy with Elizaro fixator. Most of the surgeons are saying Elizaro is cumbersome in case of femur. Cumbersome for the surgeon, not for the Elizaro surgeon. The man who knows how to apply the Elizaro surgery in the femur, that is not cumbersome for the patient. I tell you truly, that is in my practice life. I see whenever you don't put the fixator, <laughs> Nicely, not only Elizaro, any kind of external fixator. If you violate the rule, then you face lots of problems. And here, these are problems. Even then, you lengthen, you have done a quite good case, very difficult case. Thank you very much for you showing this case. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your advice, sir. Thank you. It was uh, really nice to have uh, words from a learned person like you. Uh, actually, there was some problem of. Uh, uh, soft tissue compromise. Uh, so that is why in, initially I had uh, this uh, soft tissue uh, compromise on this medial side. So doing an Elizabeth uh, would have hampered uh, for any plastic surgery procedure if it would have required a plastic surgery procedure along with doing an Elizabeth. So that is why I went ahead with the unilateral fixator in this case. See, again, theory of Elizabeth. Soft tissue lengthening is a combination of a stretch and regeneration. That is the theory of Elizar. Soft tissue lengthening is a combination of stretch and regeneration. This is the theory of Elizar. Even very big gap, gradually you can stress. Elizar, this is a tissue genesis, dermatogenesis, neurogenesis, myogenesis, osteogenesis, everything, tissue genesis. That's why Elizar uh, is a very good thing. A uh, lot of the surgeons are thinking that Elizar are only putting the words. No, you must think about the law of tension and stress. The Professor Fadel showed. Whenever I put Elizar off, I keep it in mind. What is the law of, law of tension and stress? Slow and steady traction on a living tissue creates a stress which is metabolically activated, both in biosynthetic and proliferative pathways, depending upon the load and the function. You see, in 1983, Professor Elizarov showed 330% vascularity. This is not a matter of joke. No other alternative fixator uh, gives this kind of this. Elizarov 330% shows in animals, in dogs, in cats, everywhere. This is written in the Elizarov Center, Animal Center, 330% vascularity. This is approved, and everybody knows this one. That's why I'm passing this you this this kind of message so that the young budding orthopedic surgeon they can learn. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's a lot for valuable comments. Uh, brother, sir, any comments? Please unmute, sir. Please unmute, sir. Please unmute. Yeah, I actually agree with Dr. Dingra that maybe because of the soft tissue problems. Because many times we have to deal with the plastic surgeons also. 
and i have to say that the plastic surgeon hate elizaro like whenever the plastic surgeon comes to me in a case of elizaro operation and i and when I, and i just say oh elizaro usually he tries to run away so my plastic surgeon is okay because now he's very well, well versed that in k if we are coming to our place most most probably it will be an elizaro case only but yes for plastic surgery and for the soft tissue options yeah so many times we have to go with the alpha fixator or a monodel fixator so i think as dr dingra said earlier that it all depends on the patient the patient is yours and you you know what's the best for the patient yeah so father sir please please unmute sir thank you for uh, this presentation uh, uh, dear dr mohit uh, i didn't uh, actually uh, listen for uh, it all because uh, some uh, few minutes i missed it uh, but uh, i would like to stress uh, as a basic uh, uh, in my uh, uh, experience that using uh, for the distal part of the femur or upper end uh, of the tibia or even uh, also the distal part of uh, the tibia, the uh, bone, any cancellous bone, even subtrochanteric area, this cancellous bone, it is not uh, possible to be adjusted or captured securely uh, using uh, 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 screws or shans. Uh, it is so uh, beneficial for any uh, uh, surgeon, cosmetic surgeon, to deal with this area of metaphysical parts. Uh, by using wires, even upper end of the humerus, even distal end of radius. All these cancellous bone, uh, if you use uh, the wires uh, or the wire technique with uh, a circular frame or even with a hybrid one, or even for this uh, uh, this area of fixation, the metaphysial area, which may be in the lower end of the femur, around eight to 10 centimeters. If you use wires in this area, it is so marvelous effect for you for any dealing with metaphysical area. It gives you many options, hard, not hard, but we can say that it is stable, not hard. Stable and active and resilient for any uh, 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 biological uh, uh, stress of uh, this area. So I relied upon wiring of any metaphysical area, whatever. Uh, other things in uh, cortex, uh, you can, uh, if you are, uh, 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 early in uh, Elizar of uh, frame application, you can use shans, you can use rankos, everything. But even those who are using uh, shans and ranko and uh, uh, using even monolateral, uh, in the area of metaphysical area, near joints, it is beneficial to do uh, this using uh, wiring technique. Even in the basic uh, orthopedic uh, books, not uh, research, uh, Campbell, uh, uh, Roger uh, uh, Green, uh, Rokona de Green, even the 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 uh, classic books uh, dealing with this area, even for uh, for example for uh, uh, upper end tibia and in complex uh, problems of fracture uh, upper end tibia metaphysical area, chest car five and six, and even for the pelvic fractures, the most complicated and displaced type, all this area. If you haven't uh, deal with Elizarov, at least put a hybrid fixation, or even at least a ring for this area. Uh, this is, in my opinion, is so important. Looking for that of uh, putting uh, a docking uh, uh, region uh, in this area also. It is invaginated in a soft cake. So uh, if you lift it, it will be invaginated more and more and even go for uh, uh, damaging the, the, the uh, articular cartilage. The invagination is so strong in this area. So I think in this area, either to leave the frame for a long time enough to have consolidation or to do uh, bone graft or whatever would be used, augmentation, uh, bone marrow injection, uh, uh, some uh, bone substitutes the mix it with uh, autogenous bone graft or something like this. This is two points. I think it is a uh, general, not for uh, your cases uh, 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 exactly, uh, uh, as I didn't, uh, I miss some few minutes of it. But uh, in my opinion, as a basic uh, rules in dealing with metaphysical fractures or subcortical or submetaphysical or juxta articular areas 
of uh, uh, bone. Uh, and the need for a uh, long time for consolidation or addition of uh, bone graft or augmentation by bone substitute and bone graft or even uh, bone marrow injection. Uh, thank you uh, uh, for you uh, for uh, again for your uh, nice presentation, uh, uh, Dr. Mohit. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful night, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Shall we move to the next talk, sir? I'm sure you're already late, sir. Rajas, sir? Yeah, yeah, please, yeah. We are already, like, having time. Yeah, so we yeah. have our young, dynamic, smart uh, Dr. Rajiv, Dr. Kana Rajiv called from the Hiradu Nabi College, the hospital. So, good yes, evening, I, sir. I, Am I, I visible? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, good evening, sirs. I am uh, Lieutenant Colonel Rajiv Kaul from the Military Hospital Dehradun, and I thank you for this uh, opportunity. And I'll be talking on limb salvage in the mangled foot with the use of the Elizarov external fixator. Now, before I start, uh, I have a disclaimer, and that is uh, that uh, the talk is not uh, about the Elizarov method of distraction osteogenesis. It's uh, more about the innovative use of this external fixator in the management of compound foot and ankle trauma. So uh, this first case is uh, about a 22-year-old uh, serving soldier who was run over by a truck in the wee hours of the night. And he came to us early in the morning with this grotesque looking injury. So on closer examination, you can see a complete uh, avulsion of the skin over the dorsal aspect of the foot. There were no pulsations because uh, the dorsalis pedis artery had been completely destroyed. And uh, luckily, the plantar sensations were intact and the posterior tibial artery was intact as well. Now, uh, yeah, we also noticed that he has a partial amputation of the little digit, that is the fifth uh, toe. and. Uh, we calculated his MESS score to be 7. And we have a couple of scoring systems available to classify this kind of trauma, such as the mangled extremity severity score, the predictive salvage index, the limb salvage index, the Hanover uh, fracture scale, and so on and so forth. But none of these scoring systems sort of give a consensus on these borderline cases, whether you should operate and try to salvage or whether you should go ahead with an amputation. Now, I felt that uh, there are certain clinical keys, such as the local warmth. So, if the foot is warm, it is definitely salvageable. If the plantar sensations are intact, it is salvageable again. The capillary refill time and the nail bed capillaries uh, of the of the nail bed capillaries gives another clue as to the vascularity of the foot. And uh, if you have a handheld Doppler device, it can be extremely beneficial as you can check the vascularity of the surrounding vessels, such as the anterior tibial and the posterior tibial, which were present in this case. So we took him up for an immediate uh, debridement in the OT. Uh, this was done in the wee hours of the morning. So we did not stress on getting the fracture reduction. We just applied a, an Elizaro frame like so. It's a very simple design. It's got one ring over the distal tibia one five-eighth ring over the hind foot and one five-eighth ring over the forefoot. And the forefoot is suspended from the distal tibia with the help of these two outriggers. A very simple design. Takes about 45 minutes to apply. And I again stress that uh, no attempt at reduction is done at this stage. The aim of surgery is just to stabilize the foot and to optimize the general condition of the patient. So these are his x-rays. It shows a comminuted uh, fracture of the first metatarsal, the dorsal dislocation, as well as a complete lateral subluxation of the lesser metatarsals, which is something similar to a uh, type 3 Liz Frank injury, a, di a divergent kind of injury. And uh, you can see the X-ray post-op showing uh, just a stabilization without any reduction. So 48 hours later, that's when we take our time to debride thoroughly and then reduce the TMT and MTP joints with the help of multiple K wires. That's the, the image on the left shows the tibialis anterior tendon stump being identified, which was later tagged and attached to the middle cuneiform with the help of trans osseous sutures. And this long intramedullary wire in the first metatarsal 
to substitute the bone gap and then we fortify this lizaro flame by connecting the forefoot to the hind foot with these extension plates and adding a number of wires and pins and you can see in the picture in the middle showing a prophylactic uh, fascia fasciotomy of the fourth and fifth compartments after that we covered up the wound with a vacuum assisted dressing like so and this is his uh, intraoperative x-ray showing a uh, reasonable reduction of the tmt joints and this long medullary k wire to substitute the first tree notice that we preserve the sesamoids which will be required at a later stage during reconstruction so on day 4 when we take off the dressing we observe a lot of necrosis over the dorsal skin and this skin is literally begging for vascularity and that's when we have to call in our plastic team to do an urgent flap so picture in the middle shows uh, the necrosis on day 4 and the picture on the right shows the extent of necrosis on Good day 5 okay, to the operation theater and this is what was done an antilolateral uh, thigh flap was applied by the plastic surgeons and again the versatility of the frame is so uh, it's, it's so good that uh, just by taking out these outriggers the plastic surgeon got enough space to put the flap and you can see a very good anastomosis and vascularity being achieved like so and this flap took up in about 6 weeks so here he is now of course the flap and the edges were under tension so the flap had retracted a bit exposing the bone defect underneath but the flap had taken up entirely by this stage and now we decided to go in for a definitive reconstructive procedure this is what we did we harvested a portion of the fibula which was about 8 cm in length and we shaped it in the form of a metatarsal by rounding the edges the entire flap was lifted up along the periphery the fibula was used to substitute the missing first tray fixed provisionally with k wires and later on with internal fixation in the form of a molded one third tubular plate and some small plates mini plates from the hand system like so which were applied orthogonally across the fusion sites now the aim was to get a completely fused and stable first tray with fusion at the mtp and tmt joints and also healing across the second metatarsal with bone grafting which was uh, retrieved from the proximal tibia so the fusion sites and this non union site were bone grafted using cancellous bone graft from the proximal tibia again the flap was repositioned after pie crusting to gain some length this is the immediate post op picture showing adequate or reasonable reduction and this is the patient ambulating with the frame on now in a course of time uh, the fractures healed and the frame was taken off this is the immediate uh, post removal x ray and this is his clinical picture these are pictures taken while standing and that's his functional outcome he was able to walk unassisted without a uh, actually we did give him a modified footwear with a rocker bottom sole but he did not require any ambulatory aid and he also regained some dorsiflexion at the ankle like so however the story does not end here and the patient came back about 4 to 5 months later with complaints of pain over the forefoot and we noticed that the second metatarsal plate had broken probably because of a fibrous union at that site and there was some loosening of the plate over the tmt joint across this fusion site like so and hence we had to revise this particular fixation the tubular plate was taken off and it was replaced by the modified uh, variable angling uh, angle locking system from synthes and we also re uh, revised the second metatarsal with bone grafting and this eventually went on to heal uneventfully like so with a reasonable restoration of the foot architecture including the arches and this was the patient's final functional outcome yeah very similarly we had another 
patient who landed up with a similar kind of injury. This time, all the metatarsophalangeal joints had been dislocated. There was no fracture, but it was an open dislocation of all the five metatarsals like so. So this is the image after debridement on the left. And very similarly, we put on this simple frame design. So one ring over the tibia, this big ring over the foot, which can stabilize the forefoot and connect it to the hind foot. And with the help of these outriggers, the forefoot is suspended from the tibia like so. And even if it involves the ankle joint, you can apply distraction across the ankle joint and you can connect the flail midfoot to the forefoot like so. So these are the x-rays of provisional fixation. And of course, later on this patient, uh, his, his first uh, toe, the, the great toe was not salvageable. So we had to amputate that toe. And then again, uh, you can, there's adequate space to apply a skin graft. And this heals up like so. These are his x-rays and this video shows his functional outcome. So the take-home message is that uh, timely decision-making with the involvement of a multidisciplinary team can often result in a successful attempt at salvage and should be done. And the versatility of this frame can be used to suspend a flail forefoot of the tibia in the presence of forefoot midfoot dissociation, which is often existing with a mangled foot. So thank you very much for your patient listening. I am happy to share that this case report got published in this month's uh, edition of uh, the Journal of Limb Lengthening and Reconstruction. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Rajiv. Uh, excellent cases. Actually, uh, these cases, most of the orthopedic surgeons may leave as such after, uh, after one surgery or all. But later on, as you said, like with multiple approaches and multiple surgeries, we can achieve a really good result. One my question, like you uh, use the sesamoid bones later on, because earlier yes, you sir. said that these were to yes, the sesamoids were preserved and uh, it was underneath the fibula. Okay, so what uh, did it help, like in uh, union or like in support? Yes, sir. Since uh, since the MTP joint, uh, you want to protect the MTP joint at the time of weight bearing, which is obviously fused, so the weight is taken over by the sesamoids. And it's extremely important that the sesamoids be preserved so that uh, to avoid uh, unnecessary stress uh, transfer to the fusion site. Okay. I would like to ask uh, if I may, uh, Professor Bari and Professor Fadel, how they, what would their, their yeah, approach yeah, be? Yeah. To yeah. Yeah. Put yeah. defects yeah. in the foot. Yeah. This so, is. This is the beauty of Elizaro that you have done. I must congratulate you. And uh, thank you, sir. Teaching from the from your two cases, fantastic. And we are doing these kind of cases. Same. The at the same time you have uh, corrected the list front joint type three, very nicely. The so beauty of Elizaro is that you can do the plastic surgery also. And one teaching is that Professor Fadel showed if you go for the more than five centimeter beyond that, go for grafting, that was the failure. And in this case, I could do the mini lizard of with lengthening of the, you had the bone of bone stock of the metatarsal. I can go for the mini lizard of distraction gradually, not to going for this uh, more than five centimeter that you have taken from the fibula. That was the reason. A second one, second toe, because you're taking the uh, cancellous bone. That was happened. Even then, second time you have done, fantastic. I must congratulate. This is the Lizaro that you can handle and both the cases. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Father, sir. Yes, please, sir. Father, sir, please, sir. Your comments. Thank you. Actually, uh, as mentioned by uh, uh, Professor uh, Barry, uh, very fantastic cases to use Elizarov in such difficult cases. Uh, these are uh, obligated to be dealt with uh, uh, 
plastic surgeon. Uh, I know that uh, you uh, are lucky to have a plastic surgeon to help you in uh, this case. Uh, also, it is amenable if uh, uh, you ask him to start earlier as you can, uh, as it is suggested that the first case, it will be end by uh, this gangrene and the uh, even be not complete gangrene of the dorsal uh, area, but uh, a few uh, centimeters. So it is expected in mangled uh, extremity or mangled foot uh, to have this. Uh, so uh, provisionally, uh, take care, not for you uh, only, it's for me uh, also, uh, of the degloved skin. Not all the degloved skin uh, uh, considered to be 100% um, uh, uh, amenable for uh, uh, take off again blood supply. So most of uh, this uh, should be as you did, uh, followed up. And uh, uh, I think uh, some expectation you can uh, 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 make the brightment and the trimming of this degloved uh, uh, skin, especially for the dorsum of the foot and the dorsum of the hand. All this area, actually, we find clinically and by experience that it doesn't work well uh, and the gloved skin. Uh, so uh, if you are um, not sure that it is uh, amenable for vascularity uh, again, uh, to do uh, uh, courageous debridement and uh, why not of thinking of uh, what make our uh, 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 surgery uh, and orthopedic surgery and soft tissue reconstruction nowadays or since 10 years ago, uh, the VAC or assisted uh, 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 vacuum closure uh, technique. Uh, it is uh, so uh, simple and also may help you to uh, maybe not in use urgently for those plastic surgeons, our friends, as we respect them. But if we have, have no, uh, we can use uh, this vacuum uh, or vac uh, uh, apparatus uh, even for your cases or for the cases of Dr. Mohid beforehand. Uh, it will help to get rid of uh, the scars uh, post uh, uh, healing and also give us a very good uh, 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 granulation tissue amenable for simple split six and skin graft that all of us can do it simply without need for plastic surgeon. This is the idea uh, that I would like to uh, present uh, for you is to take care of the degloved skin that it is not seems to be all this area uh, amenable for replantation and the take of blood again. And second comment is to use or rely upon uh, uh, vac or uh, acetate vacuum closure uh, apparatus. Thank you again, uh, Dr. Rajiv. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Uh, thanks, Father, sir, for a wonderful and th congratulations, uh, Dr. Raji, for a wonderful case. You can truly say that Lizarokan is very friendly with any sort of assisted surgery like VAC, flap, or skip drafting. It's done very well. It's very innovative. So, uh, any more comments, sir, or shall we? Yeah, I think it's time. And we had a wonderful cases by Dr. Dingra and Dr. Rajiv. And the wonderful presentation, first of all, by Professor Fazel. So I think our listeners, especially later on in the YouTube recordings, they will be seeing it and they will be learning a lot. So with us, I thank you to all the presenters for sparing their valuable time and presenting their cases and their talk on this Assami India webmaster series. Thanks a lot. I thank you once again on behalf of Assami India. And uh, good night, sir. Good night, good night for you all. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, Thank you, Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, Raja. Raja, Raja, yes, Raja. Uh, regarding the name of the Kurgan professor, uh, yeah. uh, I'll, yes, I'll give it to you tomorrow. You yeah. have mentioned so, some. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, instead of that, uh, can I mention other three or four names? Yeah, yeah. I, sir, I need just the best ones, who, whoever are the best ones. Yes. You must take the consent from there. I'll just put you the name. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You sir, okay, plus you. Many, then I will.